Hi all. This is a video response to an excellent video I've just seen by Majnu, who's a good friend of mine, and um, I really respect all his videos on YouTube. Please check them out as well as mine. Um, he looked at the accelerated Fianchetto variation, and for this, I'm going to look at Plaskett Adams. I'm going to flip the board now so we get from Adams' perspective. It was played in the British Championship of 1989. So Adams was black against the very aggressive Plaskett, who in this game clamped down on B5 counterplay. So we have here um, a kind of hedgehog system with black's pawn structure a bit like a, a prickly hedgehog. Black's potential threats might be later B5 if white's not careful, as we can already see with this A6 move. So white has enjoys the, the greater space and seemingly a very, very pleasant position with all his pieces harmonizing not quite nicely with the pawn structure. So black has got a solid position though and is preparing now to maneuver his bishop perhaps to Fianchetto. So after rook ac1, bishop f8, the bishop might come with g6 and bishop g7 later. And now Adams puts his queen on the back row. Potentially the queen's got a nice square here. So black is potentially exerting pressure on e4. But also maybe the bishop as an alternative plan can come to a8 and then prepare b5 at some point. After rook e1, black can now play g6. So he's improving his pieces, still playing positionally. And Plaskett played rook cd1. So again, probing potentially black's weakness on d6 which at the moment is quite a theoretical weakness, it's difficult to exploit that, that pawn on, on the semi-open file. After bishop g7 though, one of its protectors has, has moved away. So Plaskett played f4 here, and now Adams establishes a foothold in the centre with e5. And after f8 he plays knight takes e5. So we have here a potentially very weak isolated pawn and backward pawn on a semi-open file. Plaskett though switches his attention to black's king and particularly the f file and this f6 knight. Now here is a very intriguing moment where we see although the, B, the b5 plan is totally prevented at the moment, Adams plays a very provocative move playing bishop c6 and for this fraction of a moment Plaskett lets his guard down and creates a weakness which he later regrets. He plays a4. So white in theory has stopped black's counterplay with b5, which worked out very well in Majnu's video in the Accelerate Dragon, in the Accelerate Fianchetto rather. So Adams just retreats his bishop back to a8. And after rook f2, we see now Adams exploiting white trying to stop the counterplay by creating counterplay of a different kind, based on the weakness just generated, knight fd7 and now knight c5. These knights are looking really elegant to me, and so are the bishops. So black's position is kind of lovely, except for this weakness in theory, but it's difficult to exploit. After rook d1, Adams really strikes out now with a very powerful blow. Can you spot it? I'll give you five seconds. Five. 4, 3, 2, 1. He plays knight takes b3. And white's position starts crumbling like a pack of cards. After knight takes b3, knight takes c4. Forking queen and bishop. And also now c3 is going to be under pressure. So Adams realised that this is a fantastic combination. If the queen just retreats, then just knight takes b2, followed by either rook takes c3 or bishop takes c3. Plaskett plays queen f3, probing this pawn, but it's not good enough. This pawn is, is not such a serious concern for black to lose it with, even with check. Just king h8 and black's king is really secure. There's no dark squared white, white bishop. So after rook takes b2, Adams could have immediately taken on c3, but first he plays rook c7 chasing away the white queen and after queen f2 now he plays rook takes c3 so black's counterplay is now immense 
and White had tried to stop it in a disastrous way. He he let Black generate counterplay with this lovely knight d7 to c5 to take taking on b3. After knight d2, Adams played rook f8, so he's even gaining pressure on the f file now. And after queen e1, bishop d4 check, Black's pieces have really kind of exploded into life. King h1, rook e3. And the white queen has been boxed into a corner. It's just incredible. A few moves ago, white had a glorious looking position. And now the queen is forced to a miserable square g1. And Adams now just plays rook d3. And here Plaskett's had enough. My analytical assistant gives almost five pawn advantage to black. Plaskett just resigned. What a shocking transformation of position. It's, it's a game early in Adams' career where he, I believe he won the the rich championship for the first time this year although I need to check that but let's have a look in conclusion and summary of this game so it was seemingly a very um, solid system by white and a, a hedgehog kind of system by black with the potential threat later of b5 but it was always a little bit academic because it was literally clamped down by white very forcibly with a4 and my, my, the element of the video response is the fact that it did damage anyway by, by provoking white to clamp down on b5. The dark square c5 was much more effective for this knight later. As we're going to see, bishop a, a8, so knight d7 to c5, and then this powerful blow with this diagonal being torn to shreds by black. And then after that, even the f file was great for black. And, and white's queen was almost checkmated. In this final position, by the way, there is a, a nasty falcon queen and rook, so white's losing masses of material. Say queen e1, just bishop takes b2. So black's just won lots of material. So what's, what's an explosive effect, and I hope you enjoyed that game. And um, it's just another thing to consider with the b5 plan, that even its threat can cause a lot of damage to the white position. Thanks very much, and see you on YouTube.